Thank you, Brother Armand. We are happy tonight to be here to hear this wonderful message from from the lips of our brother. We believe to be anointed of the Holy Spirit to bring us these great tidings of as instead of exhortation, how we should live in this present day and holiness before God and before one another. We, we, we want the holiness among us that no filthy communications be heard among us at all as we profess this great calling of God. We must walk worthy of this thing that God has brought us to. And we're way down towards the end of the journey now where we're expecting the exceeding abundantly above all that you have. And remember, we want to constantly be in prayer. Above all things, watch your life. If your life don't tally up with God's holiness, then go back and start praying again. There's something Amen. wrong. With we must live in that kind of a state that the fruit of the Spirit will make itself known through us. That's what we want to live. You know, sometimes we hear great preachers who can preach mighty, but we'd rather see a sermon live than we would hear one preach. That's the evidence that God is on the inside. Now, we are having coming to the communion table. And now, uh, yeah, there's some that doesn't take communion, and maybe they just take it in their own churches, but we'd be happy tonight if you could we want to a fellowship with us around these things. We never draw any lines of who, as long as you're walking worthy uh, of the gospel that you're, you're listening to and confessing to be part of. You know, you're part of this gospel. Amen. You, are, you are written epistles of what we're talking about. Amen. And as long as we do something that's reproachful, then we are an impediment to what we're listening to. Amen. We must live what we believe. And live it in such a way that it will never reproach but reflect Jesus Christ in all things that we do and say. That's the way it is. We just love him for this. And now tonight, we're going to read the order of the Lord's table that's found over in Second Corinthians about the 11th chapter. And we read this and just let each individual. How we do this, if there's newcomers among us, we call the people around the altar in, in succession as they come in. Take the communion, and every Christian is worthy. Now, if you live a life that proves what you are, you want to search your heart, or let me be sure to mention this, that the scripture reads here, if we take it unworthily. Now, we know that we are not worthy in ourselves, none of us are, but that we are not trusting in our own worthiness, we're trusting in him who has we're trusting in his word Amen. Amen. that we have died to our own thinking and just think his thoughts and live that everything that we believe he commands us to and look back and see what we're living look our life over and if we're doing things that's not worthy of the gospel then we shouldn't take the communion Amen. but if we're doing things that we think that it that our lives could be read of all men that if anybody could not point a finger and say i seen this man in a bar room the other day I, I heard this man standing telling filthy jokes, this woman doing wrong. Then if you know that that's the Holy Spirit pointing to you, then, then don't take the communion. But if you if you feel that, that you're living, that you can look back and see that all your sins are confessed in another blood, then you, you're supposed to take it. Amen. You're, you're part of it. Now let us read the scripture just as St. Paul exhorts us here in the book of St. John. Now, I beg your pardon, in the book of 1 Corinthians, the, um, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which is betrayed, took bread. We start at time to, uh, uh, to speak that a little bit. The same night that he was betrayed, you see, he took bread. And when he had give thanks, he break it. He said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he supped, saying, This cup is of the New Testament, in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily 
shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, many sleep. For if we should judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. May I bring that a point? When we are judged by the Word, which is Christ, we're chastened. Amen. If we're doing wrong, we're not living up to this Word, we're chastened of the Lord. And when the Lord chastens us, that means corrects us. That we should not be condemned with the world. Amen. We are not of the world. Amen. We are different from the world, live a different life, a separated life. Hallelujah. We're never to live the life of the world and be a Christian. We're to live a, a outstanding life, a different Amen. life. Not, I don't mean in such social rank, but I mean we're to live a life of genuine holiness. Amen. That the fruits of the Spirit might be seen in us, the meekness and gentleness and patience, long-suffering faith, the fruit of the Spirit. But for when we are hear these things, then we know we're chastened of the Lord that we don't do them. Then we are condemned. And if we have no condemnation within us that we're living above that thing by the grace of God, then we're not condemned of the world, but we're living above the things of the world. See? Amen. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, carry one for the other. And if any man hungry, let him eat at home, that you be not come together unto condemnation, and the rest I will set in order when I come. We've always made great exhortations on this, that when we come together, even though that we can see nothing, there might be something in somebody else that we noticed that wasn't right. When you come together to eat this communion, uh, wait on one another, pray for one another, pray that we always make it this. I pray for you that if you, if there's some sin in you, that some unrighteous deed or something you've done as a believer, I, I pray that God will take it out of you, no. that He'll forgive you for it, and you pray for me that if there's some something that I've done that I don't know just about, if I've done it and know that's wrong, I, I'll confess it right now. I'm fixing it because he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eat and drinks damnation to himself, no. not discerning the Lord's body, the discernment of knowing that you are the large body, you can't discern it. Uh, in, in wickedness and sin, we've got to be above that. That we discern that the Lord is righteous, and we discern that He's our propitiation, that all of our sins we confess, and we believe in Him, and waiting upon His atonement to cleanse us from all of our iniquity. Then we're discerning the Lord's body, the what it, discernment of what is far. And then discerning again that in among us, as the large bride body, Let's discern if there's anything wrong with us in here that would hinder the gospel from growing or the Lord from presenting us before God as a chaste version. Let's discern that out right now and find if it's wrong. Let's confess it. Amen. Amen. Let, let's say, Lord, I'm sorry about that. So therefore, there might be something that we've done, you've done, something I've done. It might not be consciously right now. Let's ask God to forgive us for it. Yes. We used to sing a song here, forgive the, the sins I have confessed to me. Forgive the secret sins, see, that they don't even know nothing about. The unknown sins. We, we, we pray God forgive them. <laughs> now it's said when you come together, tarry one for the other, and that really would be like just tarry one with the other. Tarry needs to wait. Wait on each other. Let's do that now. I'll pray for you. If you know anything that you've done wrong, say, God forgive me. I didn't mean that. And if you help me from this night on, I will do it again. I, I mean it, Lord. I will do it again. If you just forgive me. And upon my confession, I believe you have forgiven me. I go to take the body of Christ, feeling in my heart that you forgive me for all my sins. Amen. I pray then for your secret sins. You pray for mine, that maybe something we don't know about, that we won't come together condemned with the world. We don't want the world in here, this little spot of people that... God has given us to worship with you. We want to keep ourselves clean from selfishness. 
keep our things, our sick, our lives clean from all the things of the world that we've been in spotted with that. We want to be ready for the rapture. Amen. So let us pray now silently for one another just a moment. <clears throat> you pray for me as I pray for you. Lord Jesus, let it be, Lord, that all of our sins be now in the blood of the Lord Jesus, in the forgiveness of God's recollection, that we come together now as beloved believers and children in Christ. For we ask it in his name. Amen. Now at this time, while the the elders, I think, they come to the front. Is that still the brother, brother, Tony, brother. brother Tony is able, and he will direct it. And if there's any has to go now, don't want to stay for the communion. We're happy to have you in tonight. Remember our Wednesday night, Wednesday night prayer meeting, and you slip out quietly while the rest of them come to the altar. And brother Zabel here will direct the, the people to the altar while we make ready the communion. of the Lord Jesus, the bread. And as the song was just saying, my faith looks up to thee. There's only three orders that the Lord to give us. And that was baptism, taking of the bread and wine, and feet washing is the order. And this represents the broken body of Christ. My prayer is that every person that partakes of this tonight that will receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit to come upon them, and that they are sick, may the God of heaven, who instituted this in the first form down in Egypt by taking the, the, uh, the bitter herbs and wine, I uh, trust that God will heal you and in your entire journey there will be no sickness among you. May the God of heaven look to us now as we offer this to him. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life and giver of every good gift, we thank thee for this order, that we can do this in remembrance of you as we fellowship as it was in your presence around the communion of God's grace as we think of in our own hearts that one day we were unworthy. And now the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from that sin that we stand together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This kosher bread, Father, that's been baked and brought here for this purpose. We ask you to sanctify it, Lord, that in the representation of the broken body, as the sacredness and the pain and suffering that he did at Calvary. When this body was broken, that he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. That's why we take this broken bread tonight. God bless the believers and sanctify this, this uh, kosher bread to be the representation of the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says, in like manner, he took the cup. And when he stuck, he talks to take and drink. This is the cup of the New Testament. As often as you do this, you show forth the Lord's death till he comes. So I hold in my hand tonight this wine. 
made from the from the life of grace. It's been brought together here to represent the blood of Jesus Christ. There's never a time yet that I've ever picked up the communion tree when I just look in there and see my sins gone. Uh, I see if it hadn't been for that. What what well, where would we be? I think of in there where a sick man lay dying in a hospital me. And it's three stripes I was healed. Uh, May the God of heaven bless this one for its intended use. Lord Jesus, we present to you this great juice, wine, taken from the blood of the grape to represent the blood of Jesus Christ. May as we receive it, Father, may sickness depart from us. May sin, desire be taken from us. May we live such holy, consecrated life after this, that man will see the reflection of Jesus Christ in us. And that our, our walk in life would be worthy of the gospel that we believe. Grant us, Father, and sanctify the, this wine now for its intended use. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.